I want to preach this word or teach this message this morning. Now, it's going to be offensive. You know, sermons are not always designed to make you happy. They don't just challenge the hearer, they challenge the giver who's giving it as well. And when I was reading the sermon, for I'm like, God, this is, this is a tough one, but it's helpful. If I use it, it'll make me better. If you use it, it'll make you better. I don't stand teaching as, um, I stand teaching as this is what God spoke to me to speak to you. He uses me to speak it through me, but it doesn't just apply to you, it also applies to me too. So we're all in this together. Matthew 19, 11, 13 through 13. So this is a situation that's happening in this particular passage where Jesus is being confronted by, I want to always give you the passage, um, the background, so you can have a greater understanding of what's happening. Jesus has his disciples. They're asking a particular question because at, at that time there was, there was two um, leading thinkers of the day. Um, there was Rabbi Hillel, he was one, and you can research him, he was one of the four running thought leaders of the day. He, he helped them form the Old Testament and interpret it. Um, he's the founder of the House of Hillel School. And so uh, in that day, it was Jesus was like the third leader that was coming up. The second leader was Shammai. Shammai was 60 years younger than Hillel, but he was, he was booming. And, and people, what they would do is, Whenever Jesus would have a teaching, they would reference these two because, but I heard, I heard, the, no, I heard what you're saying, but these two said. And so the disciples, after a while, they started getting curious because they, they, even though they were listening to Jesus, they were also listening to other people too. So, so, so they started listening to other people's information and they started asking particular things like, well, then Jesus, I, I got a question. Like, so if you're going to get married are you stuck in it forever? Because Hillel and Shema are giving us different reasons on why we can get out of our marriage. And Jesus says, no, the only reason why they're giving you those reasons is because Moses knew that your hearts were hard. And so that's the only reason why Moses permitted divorce, but it was never God's intention. And we're gonna do a panel discussion soon about blended families. We're gonna have all men talking about how it is to be married in a blended family. And then we have another panel where all women talking about how it is to be married in a blended family. Because the church has to do a better job of identifying things that are challenges in the pews. And I was gonna teach a series on blended families, but then I was listening to a group of guys talk about blended families and I was like, okay, this sermon is trash. Y'all need to talk about this. And so it's gonna air later on in March, but it's going to be very helpful because it's going to give you perspectives for those who are thinking about, I want to marry somebody with a child, or those of you that may be in a relationship thinking about exiting the relationship and thinking about the future challenges that are to come with blended families, and some do it very well, but there are yet some challenges. So these disciples are asking this question, like, how, how does this get, how does this marriage thing work? Can we escape it? Do we have to be in it forever? Uh, and then Jesus is talking about like there are some people who don't ever want to have uh, relations and they're called eunuchs. Eunuchs are people that were castrated. They were males that were castrated. So they don't have reproductive organs. And the reason why they did that, number one, was because they wanted to make them less aggressive. So they castrated them because they were working around women. To ensure the safety of the woman, they castrated them. Some castrated themselves because they couldn't control themselves. And they wanted to be so much like Jesus that they just cut it off. All right, let's keep it moving. All right, and, and so, so this is the extreme. And so you got some eunuchs that were forced to be this way. And then he says, well, then there's some that don't want marriage. And, and that's because they can't reproduce. And so in, in the Jewish culture, which was, it was very important for you and I to know when we read this, the Jewish culture, reproduction was a big thing. Like if you didn't reproduce, they just didn't want to have nothing to deal with you. So it wasn't like, oh, how big is your wedding going to be? It's like, no, when are you going to bring me them children? Because that was big in their culture. So now that you're reading this, 
That's the background. Matthew 19, 11 through 13 reads like this in the Message Bible. It says this, but Jesus said, not everyone is mature enough to live a married life. And of course, we're not just going to limit this to marriage. It's going to be about singleness. It's going to be about dating. It's going to be about friendships. It requires a certain aptitude and grace. Somebody type in aptitude. No, type. You can't say aptitude. You got to type it. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. requires a certain aptitude and grace. Marriage isn't for everyone. Some from birth seemingly never give marriage a thought. Others never get asked or accepted. And some decide not to get married for kingdom reasons, which I told you last week. If you didn't watch last week's message, please rewatch it. Uh, kingdom reasons, I, I just want to serve God and I don't want to be bottled down with anything that's going to hinder me. But if you're capable of growing into the largeness of marriage, then you should do it. Ar Archibald, Hart, Archibald Hart, Hart, former dean of psychology and emeritus status at Fuller Theological Seminary says, he gives a lecture about how they did an exam for animals separated from their mother, and then they put the animal with another person that wasn't their mother but had all the food, and they made sure the mother had no food. They put another same species mother there that had all the food, and they wanted to see where the animals would go. Would the animals go to the same species female that had food and nutrients, or would they go to the mother that was nurturing? Well. Believe it or not, the animals went where the relationship was. Because at birth, even animals know that relationships are so critical. At birth, our, our brains are hardwired for relationship with our mothers. We come out the womb, we come out screaming, and the warm touch of our mother calms us down. You know, life is about relationships, even though the world doesn't value relationships and they try to minimize relationships, you go and buy a car. You don't see a one-seater car. You see a two-seater car. Why? Because we assume that you will want to bring other people with you in your vehicle. One-bedroom homes don't pop up all the time or are not very popular. Why? Because we know that most people want to share their space with other people. Now, even think about restaurants don't just have spaces for one person. They have multiple tables because they know people want to eat together and have relationships. The world needs relationships because that's how the world thrives. Apps, they boom the ones that are given to relationships. Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Clubhouse, all these apps that help build some type of relationships. They may not be authentic relationships, but yet they still are virtual relationships. Relationships are not just marriage, they're platonic. Relationships are the most rewarding and most complex thing you will ever enter into. Relationships require an aptitude and they require grace. Relational quotient is important because it says, I must have an education on how to relate to others, hence the word relationships. However, I do want to land this plane this morning on the runway of maturity because most relationships, in my opinion, and in this scripture, teach us that maturity is the reason why a lot of things don't move forward. If we just take a few seconds so I could build my case on Many people will say, well, I don't think it's maturity. I think there are other factors. I agree, but I think the other factors often are symptoms to the root of a lack of maturity. Arguments happen and don't get settled because of a lack of maturity. Fighting happens because of a lack of maturity oftentimes. Disrespect happens because of a lack of maturity and understanding of what one another is saying. Ignoring one another 
is a reality because of immaturity. One doesn't want to go to another. Not calling a friend because you want to see who's going to call who first is immaturity. Not answering the phone when people are trying to deal with you is because of immaturity. <laughs> Not responding to text messages because you're upset is a lack of maturity. Not responding to DMs because they can't reach you via text is a lack of maturity. Not responding to Facebook messages or tags is a lack of maturity. Calling one out of their name is a lack of maturity. Hanging up on one another. Can't get no help in this quiet Catholic church. Talking down to one another is a lack of maturity. Petty behavior is a lack of maturity. Talking about somebody's mama is because of a lack of maturity. Never talking to them is because of a lack of authority, maturity. All, in my opinions, are symptoms of the root of immaturity. Jesus says it very carefully. If you want to get married, you got to be mature. So Jesus is not just saying marriage is not good. He's, he's, he's given an instance that marriage is hard, number one. He lays out that not everybody's meant to be married. That's not the highest office in the world is to be married. He's like, no, it's not for everybody. It's difficult. Jesus himself was single. Can you imagine Jesus being married and doing ministry? What's that Mary Magdalene rubbing her hair on your feet? Who she thinks she is? Oh, she worshiping? Uh-uh, not my man. She ain't going to be worshiping you. Uh-uh, that ain't going to happen. What you mean you out healing people? You, you're supposed to be home at 7. You know we got dinner plans. What you, what, you, what you mean you out there? You about to go up on the mountain and pray. Who you going up there to see? Who you going to talk to up on that mountain? You always by yourself. And then you with Peter, James, and John. What's going on? What type of relationship you and Peter, James, and John? Y'all always say, Jesus knew like, listen, I ain't got time for that. I'm just going to be single, do what I need to do, and not have to answer to anybody. Because that's how I want to live my life. So then Jesus gives some grounds for divorce. I want to, I'm going to briefly run through these, and then we're going to get to where we're at. So he's given grounds for what, what's considered your escape clause. And he's like, number one, it's, a, it's, it's abandonment, which, which Paul goes into in 1 Corinthians. He says, like, yo, Paul is a Pharisee. They believe he was married, and when he became a Christian, it is supposed that his wife left him. And Paul writes, he says, like, if your spouse decides that they want to get up and leave, let them go. Amen. They walk out, he says, let them go. It doesn't say, can you get remarried? It just says you're free to divorce. It doesn't say you can get remarried. That's a subject of interpretation. Um, adultery. And, and then some kind of stretch it and say, like, because in the word Matthew 19, Jesus uses the word pornea, which is the word for pornography in which we get. So, so these are all sexual sins. And then third, he says, um, some add, which is not really added. It's, it's why Jesus says Moses allowed you to have a certificate of divorce is because of abuse. Because they were getting abused so that they can kill their spouses so that they can say, well, they're dead. Now I can get remarried. And Moses was like, well, hold up. If you're going to do all that, just divorce them. You don't need to kill them and leave them. Just leave them. So we say abandonment, uh, adultery, and abuse. Now, I'm not, gonna, I'm, not, I'm not going to interpret for you, that's your job, th that someone said, well, I was verbally abused. Well, I don't know if that was Jesus' intention because somewhere along the way in relationships, there's going to be some verbal abuse. That's just the reality of it, right? I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying I don't think that's the reality of it. Now, don't email me and say, well, you said about verbal abuse. I'm just telling you what the Scripture says. You argue with the Lord about those things. I'm just doing my job. So now, here's, here's the thing. Expectations, remember I said expectation minus communication equals frustration. Here's what I do want to tell you. Expectations are not what you infer or suggest, but what you actually give voice to. 
Expectations are not what you infer or suggest, but what you actually give voice to. Don't hold, in my famous way I say it, don't hold people accountable for what you don't tell them. Amen. Expectations are not what you infer or suggest, but what you actually give voice to. So if you don't give voice to it, then no one's going to know. And that's what's going to make relationships difficult. It's going to make it difficult in friendships. If you don't tell me you don't like to be called pookie, Right, and I start calling you pookie and you upset, but expectations not given a voice to, you can't infer, you can't suggest, you gotta give voice to it. And in relationships, you need to be extremely clear on what you expect from one another. If you are not clear, you cannot cut everybody off because of your inability to communicate your expectations. I don't believe Jesus interpreted for us to cut everybody off because it doesn't go our way. So here, here it is. And then this is a very important one. I need you to understand this if you're single or whatever, or married. But um, I think Jesus was really trying to hammer down to people like marriage is not for everybody. In my PDSJ version, I would say that what Jesus was trying to help us understand is that marriage is not medicine for a broken single. Marriage is not medicine for a broken single. Marriage is not medicine. <laughs> marriage is not medicine for a broken single. And then Jesus says this. He says, some people want marriage because they want to have relations in God's sight and be honorable. But Jesus is drawing the line, too, and just making the killer case, like, some people don't need that, so they can get what they need out of relationships from friends. Okay, let's break it down. Let's, let's me, 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 and, me and my, my wonderful uh, staff person, Barbara, we were having this discussion, this is matter 36 years. I said, well, if you take out relations, because we have kids, in, in, in a marriage, can you not get the other things in friendship? Companionship? You can get that in a friend. Because some of you have friends that are closer than your spouse. I ain't starting an argument, I'm just telling you a fact. Don't go home like, who's your friend that's closer than me, right? Uh, uh, so some of, us have, some of us have friends that are close. So uh, I need someone to go out with. You can get that in a friend. I need someone to talk to all night. You can get that in a friend. You, you, you can't procreate with a friend. Well, some of us do, but you can't <laughs> procreate with a friend, right? But the things that you need for self-fulfillment can come through the relationship channel of people. And it doesn't mean it comes from one person. It can come from a ver variety of people. Because you got that friend that's funny. You got that friend that's good at business. You got that friend that's good at money, and you draw strength from the places that you need to draw strength from. So you're not going to get everything from one person. You're not going to get everything in a spouse. Because only God can meet every one of your needs. There's a funny meme out that says um, God couldn't give um, um, women everything. It's a joke. It says God gave them hair, and then they added more. God gave them eyebrows, and then they drew it differently. God gave them eyelashes, and then they added more to it. So how can a man make a woman fully happy, right? It's a meme. Don't judge me. Judge your mama. All right? Here we go. So my, my point is this, is that man will never be able to satisfy you. When I say man, I mean mankind. Woman will never satisfy you fully 100%. We all need a space that only God can fill. Let me give you this. Jesus is trying to hammer out some challenges that hit relationships and abandonment, adultery, abuse. They, 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 they don't necessarily go in a friendship context, but I do want to give you some that do work in all relationship contexts. And I want to give you this. Um, ignoring people, in my opinion, is the highest form of ignorance. Because relationships require maturity and they require difficult conversations. There's a great book, it's called Having Hard Conversations. Have you ever not wanted to talk to someone and you just ignored them? 
Y'all ain't going to be honest in the church. Have you just knew, I don't want to deal with them, I don't want to see them, you just ignored them. The reality of the matter is immaturity says, because I don't want to talk to you, I won't. And then when they die, that's why scripture says, don't, no, no, go fix it. Because when they die, you're going to be up here doing the most. Now, if we want to be Bible, the scripture says this. If you have an offense, this hurts. If you have an offense with somebody, he said, don't come up here and sing about your love for God. He said, leave your gift at the altar. And then go try to make it right. Now, if they don't make it right with you, that's on them. Y'all don't want to hear the Bible. Y'all want to just do your own thing. Now, now I know a lot of you think, I just cut them out. They tried me. I was done with them. And God's like, okay, but you do know that that's not maturity. Because a lot of times, we don't give people an opportunity to give their own defense. We incriminate them based on what we perceive and what we feel, and then we render a verdict. But ignoring people, in my opinion, is the highest form of ignorance. That's where we get the word ignorance from. Ignore. It's important to know that if you're the type of person that likes to just run and ignore people, you're not ready to be married. Because you can't just keep ignoring your spouse because it don't go right. Ooh, I done lost a lot. You can feel the tension in the room. Can you play something else just a little happier so they can feel a little better? Because they real, it's really tough in here, man. Ignore, and it's, and it's a challenge sometimes. Sometimes it's easier just to ignore somebody and not have to deal with it. But maturity says... I must deal with what I don't like because just because I don't like it doesn't mean I don't have to deal with it. All right? So, all right, let me move on because you look really mad. So, there's this argument that says, you got to marry the, you got, you got to marry, you got to, you got to, you got to marry the right person. Child, you know why it didn't work out? Because you didn't marry the right person. You know why the friendship didn't work out? Because you didn't have the right friend. No, I would like to submit to you according to what the text said that you don't marry the right person, you grow into the right person. Okay, I can't, I can't, I can't. I'm need a drummer or something, a bass player. Uh, you, you, don't, you don't marry the right person, you grow into the right person. You don't, you don't have the right friend, you grow into the right friend. Some friends you know that I need to grow with them. I need to grow in such a way because they, they're the type that may go off. Of, you, so you know how to grow with people. If you don't know how to grow with people, you will lose people and blame them. And you should be blaming the fact that you did not grow with them. You don't marry the right person. Woo! You grow into the right person. Y'all ready for this one? So maybe the question should be like, how can I grow with you? How, how, can, I, how can I be mature and grow with you? There's no such thing as mutual fulfillment without mutual sacrifice. There's no such thing as mutual fulfillment. I, I just want to be fulfilled. So what are you going to do to be fulfilled? I just, I, just, I, just, I just want my friends to take me out to dinner. When are you going to pay? Because mutual fulfillment requires mutual sacrifice. I'm so mad. Y'all don't check on me. Y'all don't follow up with me. When are you going to check on somebody? You do know other people have things that are happening in their world that are bigger than you. Mutual fulfillment requires mutual sacrifice. If I want to ride for you, you got to ride for me too. No, we live in a one-sided world that wants everybody to do all the sacrificing and they want to reap the rewards. No, we both need to sacrifice because if we want mutual fulfillment, we mutually both have to sacrifice. All right, here we go. Sacrifice is key if we want to get the most out of our relationships. <laughs> uh, not only did Jesus say it was hard, he said we need to grow into it. Meaning we don't always stay the same. 
come on, Jesus, what do you mean we got to grow? Because you don't stay the same. So relationships require each of us to grow because who you met yesterday is not who they are today. Ooh, when I land this plane home, you're going to be so tore. Because here's the thing. Jesus knew that who you were three years ago is not who you're going to be today. What you value is not what you value today. And a lot of us say, we grew apart. Yeah, you grew apart because we stopped growing together. Now, you ever have a friend in school, we're good friends, and then you go to a different school, and then the friendship ends? Me, I have a friend, we were friends. Boy, we thought we were going to be friends till, 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 till Jesus returned. We played basketball in middle school together. My friend Bobby Thomas. We played middle school ball together. We had matching jerseys, matching sneakers. They used to call us twins. Well, you seen Bobby, you seen me. I remember me and Bobby were so ride or die, we thought we were going to be friends forever. We used to play this game in middle school called BB. How many of y'all know that game? Y'all don't, y'all don't know what BB is? All right, anyway. So BB is, if you see a, a car, okay, remember, punch buggy, don't punch back? All right, there you go, there you go. My childhood's a little different. I grew up as a Christian. So um, my wife the other day, she's like, hey, you need to go to the store and uh, get some Valentine's Day candy for Devin's school. I was like, what is that? She said, y'all didn't pass out Valentine's as kids? I said, no, I grew up as a Christian. She said, oh, forget it. your childhood's all jacked up. I said, okay. She said, I said, she said go to the store and FaceTime me and see what the, then I'm looking at, she's like, okay, you got to buy all these things because he's going to give these candies to different kids in his class. I said, well, what type of training are they trying to give our children to be in relationships with other people, giving them candy and sweets? I don't want any child giving my daughter any sweets. I don't want them giving them any type of candy. I don't care if you say it's friendly. I don't believe it. So here's the part that I was saying. When me and Bobby, we grew up together, we thought we were best friends. And there was a game that we were playing, punch your buggy, don't punch your back. Any car that starts with B, you punch your back. So I, I saw a car. I saw, I think it was a beetle. And then I punched this young lady in her back. It was really, really hard. And so she started crying and just being oh, over dramatic at the time. And so she, she went to the principal's office. She started snitching. Bobby went in and said, he didn't punch her. I punched her. She said, no, it was him. And I said, no, it was Bobby. And so, no, Bobby said, no, it was me. We were riding down. We were so, and then my dad came, picked me up, and then he told me that I was suspended. First time I ever got suspended. And so, I, don't judge me. Judge your mama. And so, so my dad comes and picks me up, and he says, and I'm scared. I'm crying. I got to figure out, because my dad would have whooped me bad. I got to figure out a reason why I got suspended. And my dad comes, picks me up, says, I, the school called me, say you got suspended. You punched a girl. I said, Dad, I didn't punch a girl hard. It was soft. It was really soft. And I said, Dad, I think they're doing it to me because, you know, because I'm black. And my dad said, what? I said, yes, because I'm black, Dad. That's why they're doing it to me. I went to predominantly white school. You got to use whatever card you got. That woman was going to be serious. So my dad says, I can't believe this. I can't believe it. He goes in the office and he says, my son will not be suspended. He is a good Haitian boy. He would never do that. I said, never do that. Never do that, Daddy. Never. So all of this thing, right? I got, I got freed, exonerated. God forgave me. I lied. He forgave me, and I forgave myself. But the part of it, I thought we would be best friends forever. Bobby went to Edgewater. I went to Dr. Phillips. I wanted to go to Dr. Phillips. He wanted to go to Edgewater, and we had a serious conversation. I said, we got to go together. No, you can't go to one school, and I go to another. We, we in this together. No, my heart was broken. Bobby said he won't go to Edgewater. But we never talk. Why? Because we grew apart. But if we wanted to stay together, we would grow together. We didn't have cell phones. We had beepers back then. Y'all remember that beeper? My wife had a beeper because her, her parents were real strict. So I wanted to get around them and her brother. I just paid her. And they didn't know she was calling the kid. No, anyway, so anyway, so here, here's, here's how it goes. So, so call me. So, so here's, so seriously, but you, you grow, you need to grow together. 
Relationships require growth. And let's grow together. All right, let's go with this one. We are all constantly changing as we face new obstacles in life. As we go through new experiences, the experiences change us. Some of us are changed not because we want to be changed. The experience just changed us. Like, I, didn't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want to think all people are bad, but I, 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 I had this happen to me, and because this happened to me, I look at everybody this way. So we need to identify, even in friendships and relationships, what made you change? All right, so I want to give you this illustration, and John, and I need your son to come up and do this one. So I think this is going to be very helpful. So here's what Martin Luther says, not Martin Luther King. Martin Luther, the reformer, he says, let the wife make the husband glad to come home and let him make her sorry to see him leave. It works both ways, so not neutral, whatever. Let the wife make the husband glad to come home and let him make her sorry to see him leave. If we can do that, then our relationships can be healthy. But I want you to see the sequence of what Jesus says that he talks about. He says this. He says, suffer not the children to come to me. He's talking about marriage, and then he's talking about children, and then he starts talking about money. Which is interesting because the three things that seem to tear people apart is they can't relate to each other. They have children, and children cause them to grow apart. That's why you can have people who've been married 40 years, and then when their kids leave, they divorce. And then he talks about money. Because in some relationships, we're trying to grow like the Joneses as opposed to grow like each other. You can't want red bottoms and a roof. One of them got to be paid. You understand what I'm saying? I'm not saying you can't have red bottoms. I'm simply saying you can't make your spouse get red bottoms and we can't pay for the roof. You can't make your spouse buy you a Gucci belt and we can't pay for the lights. We can't want the finer things in life and we not fine. Because how many relationships could be salvaged if we weren't trying to compete with another? I know that was a marriage contest, but we lose friends because we compete on what we think they should have done for us based on what they did for somebody else. How come you gave them $20 for their birthday and you gave me 10? I ain't had no money. Oh, oh, so you so you went to their you went to their party, but you didn't come to mine. I was busy. My mom died on that day. Because everybody thinks the world revolves around them. And we start not judging our relationships, we start judging our friendships on how they relate to, maybe they are deeper in relationship with that person than they are with you, and that's okay. It's not an indictment on your relationship. It just means that they find more value in that particular person. But we gotta be mature enough to say, I'm okay being the third best friend. I don't have to be the first. And really, if you're a good friend, it's very difficult to have multiple friends and be, and be very efficient at it because relationships require investment of time. Right? How many got that one BFF? How much time does it take for y'all to gel and know what each other's saying without them saying a word? It takes time. So not every friend is going to be at the same level, and that's okay. You got to be okay with that. But this illustration is going to help you all greatly. Um, John and his son. So I want John to hold the end rope. Link them two together, Josh. So I'm a visual learner. Um, I think that has helped me the best. He's married with John, let's be clear. Okay, I want you to hold the, you put the phone down, it's not. You put it in your pocket. Or yeah, put it up there. Lay it on the altar as an offering. All right, so put it, I want you to hold this rope, face that way. You got to come into the camera, though, so that you can see you online. 
And then I want you, Prince, to hold the end of the rope. All right? So here's what happens. <clears throat> when we're in relationship, whether it's marriage, whether it's friendship, it doesn't matter what it is. When I stand at the altar with somebody and, uh, and, and they're getting married, or you're getting married, or performing a ceremony, or, or you have a friend, you need to know that you're not just marrying him, you're also marrying him. What I mean by that is, let's just say John is him. Whatever happened in John's childhood affects his adulthood. And that's why we need to grow into, because I need to know what happened to you here so I can understand why you're here. Because if I don't understand you're there, I will think you're indifferent, I will think you're mean, I will think you're cruel, and it, those may be true, but I need to understand what happened along the way to get you there. Because some of us fall in love with this person and not recognize that in every increment, we start, oh, come here, Blake. All right. You know, there's steps over here, man. Stand in the middle. So this is adulthood. You don't just marry him. You marry him too. What happened to you in, in high school? What happened to you in middle school? What happened to you in college? Let me borrow you. You right there. Yep, come on. Just, just jump over. Don't jump over here because I ain't got insurance. It ain't going to work. It don't work on Sunday. No, no, no. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Turn the camera off. Y'all ain't see it. Turn the camera off. You marry him too. I, I need to know what happened at this age. I need to happen with this age. I need to happen with this age. Because maybe you snap at people who say the wrong thing to you because your daddy said the wrong thing to you at this age. And so when you say that word to me, it triggers this man. And it's not about you. It's about everything that happened here that we're minimizing because all I want to know is the grown you. I need to know all of you because if I don't know all of you, I'm not just falling in love with you. I may fall out of love with you because I did not fall in love with him. So here it is. Every stage makes us become a different person. Let me see. Uh, um, um, find me another older boy. Let me see. A little older. Doodle. Little Brabus. Come here. All right, football player. Yeah. Uh, he's coming online. He's taking a while. Uh, come on. Run like you're a cornerback. All right. Good. Offensive lineman, cornerback. I need to know what happened here. How, how was your relationship with your dad? How's your relationship with your mom? Because all that matters. And if you're a female, it's the same thing. I, 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 don't, I, I don't need to know all that. You do. Because if you don't fall in love with all of them, you're never going to understand that. They all play a part in who they are. How many times have you discounted this person because you never took the time to get to know that person? See, I, I, I start exploring me at that age. I, I, was, I, I dressed like this at school. Yeah, I went to school. People are like, bro. I want to be a preacher. This was before preaching was popular. At that age, how old are you? You're 10? Okay. At 10 years old, my sister went to jail. First time I ever heard of jail. And then my brother left at 10 years old to the military. And that was the most traumatic experience I've ever seen in my life. They came in, they grabbed us. My brother was my hero. He was like, me and him look like twins. He's just older. 
he has no hair. I have great hair. Uh, he, um, anyway, um, he, he was like my superhero. He, he decided he wanted to go to the military. Never, we didn't know why. He was playing football, college football, got in trouble, lost his scholarship, didn't want to come back home. And so instead of coming back home, he went to the military. The military came. They just came in the house. They grabbed all his things. And I watched him walk out the door. And the only thing I remember was him doing a wave. So if you ask me about the military, it's not that I don't believe in the military. I feel like the military stole my brother. So when in high school they asked me about ROTC, I got so offended that you would ask me about joining ROTC. I don't want to have nothing to do with y'all. But if you don't understand that, you won't understand this. So I grew up as an only child almost. My brother wasn't around, my sister wasn't around. So I grew up as a, as a unique only child situation. My sister had various issues of drugs and all that type of stuff. So I'm a clinger. If I like you, I like you for life. But you won't understand this person if you don't understand that person. So for me, relationships matter. So for me, I, because I know this person, I try not to enter into relationships that I know will break me. But if you don't understand this person and don't see this person, you'll never understand that person. So, so if, if you need to know, how was your teen? Did you grow up having family? Did y'all have all? No, my, my family wasn't around and my family didn't, we didn't have Thanksgiving dinners and stuff like that. And so I got married. I want to help you because being transparent helps. I, I got married. My wife grew up with all her siblings. They talk every day. I thought that was so weird. Like, why do y'all, like, do you need to talk to each other every day? Like, is this, is this really real that y'all need? So on Thanksgiving, when, my wife would tell you, when we first got married, on Thanksgiving, you would find me in a corner hidden. Because after a while, it became depressing. Because I did ne I never saw family sit together at a Thanksgiving table together and it became torture to me to go to Thanksgiving. But at first I was like, why are you always by yourself? You always just drift out by, and I, my brother-in-law's like my brother. But if you don't understand him, you'll never understand him. That's why we grow together. So then Thanksgiving will come and she'll make sure that, hey, let, I see you drifting, come, come with me. Why, because that's how you grow together. Some of us leave each other where we're short and Jesus says if you don't want to sacrifice then don't damage somebody else because you don't want to grow with them so I close with this you can't force this person can't force everybody and this person can't blame this person for why he is the way he is. At some point, this person has to take responsibility and say, I need to be better. Right? Now, <laughs> Penny, come here. Let me borrow you, because you're married to him. Cole? Okay. All right, this Penny's gonna be his wife? I want to give you a visual example on why marriages don't work. So y'all hold that cord. I need a little kids. Claire, can I borrow you? Um, um, let me borrow another little kid, little girl. Brad has two little daughters. Come on. Y'all going to be famous. All right, I want you to stand right here. No. How old are you? Yes, yeah, stand, stand right here. Yep. All right, come on. Y'all so cute. All right, you're going to stand right here. You're going to stand right here. Let's say this is Penny. If he doesn't get to know all of these and she doesn't get to know all of them, 
y'all gonna be confusing each other. And because you don't know each other, what happens? Because you didn't have, you didn't deal with your daddy issues, you didn't deal with your mama issues. So what happens is, John, come over here. Hold this rope. Let go of here, my promise is okay. Leave me that jacket at the end of service, thanks. No suspenders. So what happens is, you end up marrying a child that's looking for a mother. Because the grown man didn't heal, you end up asking your wife to be your mom. Or vice versa, John, go up there. Prince, come back here. Every girl, right, every girl, some of these young, come here, sweetie. Some of you young girls. Penny. Yep. Hold this baby girl. Penny, go back down there. So now we have this at the altar. She really looking for her daddy, but she just substituted him with a husband. And because this little girl, all she did, <laughs> this is so good. This little girl, all she, okay, come back, come back, come back, come back. Hold this, hold this rope, hold this rope. Okay, come here, come here. So this little girl, all she did was dream about being married. All she did was play with Barbie dolls, want to get married. Now she gets a little older, and, and she's still dreaming about that day because as a kid, that's all she dreamt about. That's all she wanted. That's all she seen. And then that's, that's all she thought about. And then as she gets a little older, she still thinks about getting married and, and having all that and doing all that and, and just having this. And, and she didn't always see a healthy picture of what family was or she had a distorted view of what family or relationships was. And so what will happen is she will just substitute for anybody to quench the thirst of her childhood. And some of you didn't marry right. You married what was available. So here's the word of the Lord to us. You, you got to find who you are because it's not their job to discover you. And why didn't it work? Because you didn't, you didn't grow. When we grow, it grows. So it's, it's a challenge for all of us. We gotta grow through it. And I know all of us have challenges in life. At this age, you may have been violated and it affected you as an adult. Like all these things happen to us in this sinful world. And some of us at this age, you're just mad, you're just angry because, you know, daddy tried you and you just grew up angry and that's just how you are. And, and now you're married to somebody that's gotta learn how to grow and adjust and dance around, but you just can't keep saying, well, that's how I was as a child. At some point, you have to take accountability for you. Bow your heads, let's pray. Father, I thank you for what's been said. I thank you for the word of God.